नेक्स्ट एम वन पेपर फोर नवंबर ट्वेंटी ट्वेंटी वन द सेकेंड वेरियंट लेट्स लुक एट द फर्स्ट क्वेश्चन द फर्स्ट क्वेश्चन इज अबाउट काइनेमैटिक्स एंड दिस इज अबाउट कॉन्स्टेंट एक्सेलरेशन सो इट्स काइनेमैटिक्स विथ कॉन्स्टेंट एक्सेलरेशन a speed time graph is given a velocity time graph the diagram shows vt graph which models the motion of a car the graph consists of six straight line segments the car accelerates from rest to a speed of 20 over a period of 5 seconds then travel at the speed for further 20 seconds so 5 till 25 is further 20 then decelerates to 6 meter per second over a period of 5 seconds the speed is maintained for further t minus 30 the labeling is t this is 30 so this is t minus 30 then from t to 50 it's accelerating 50 to 60 it's decelerating now the question is the question is bigger than the solution given that during the two stages of motion when the car is accelerating which are the two stages of motion during which car is accelerating this is the first stage and this purple one is the second stage the accelerations are equal find the value of t very simple acceleration is the gradient of a velocity time graph so 20 minus 0 divided by 5 minus 0 that is equals to the difference in the velocities which is 20 minus 6 over 50 minus t so 20 over 5 is 4 20 minus 6 is 14 50 minus t is 50 minus t cross multiply 50 minus t is 14 over 4 that comes out to be 3.5 therefore the value of t comes out to be 46.5 seconds that is the simple short answer for this particular question for this particular part now what is the next thing the next thing is find the total distance traveled by the car during this motion now the total distance traveled that is all these areas added together so let me redraw it relabel it so for this one this is a triangle that's the first one i can actually take a trapezium also if i want to but that's a trapezium plus a rectangle so let's not go into that this one from here to here that is a rectangle the third one is a trapezium so this orange one is a trapezium so it goes like this the fourth one which is blue again that is a rectangle the fifth one which is purple again that is another trapezium and last but not the least the orange one that is a triangle so there are six regions that i have marked the first region is a triangle second one is a rectangle third one is a trapezium fourth one is a rectangle fifth one is again a trapezium and the sixth one is a triangle so basically you add up all the areas and let me write it over here so area of 1 let me make the marker thinner that's half into 5 into 20 so half into 5 into 20 area of 2 that is 20 multiplied by 20 i'm simply writing it down area of 3 that is a trapezium half sum of parallel sides so one side is 6 the other is 20 that's 20 plus 6 multiplied by height which is 5 this is the height the fourth one is another rectangle we now know what is t that is 46.5 minus 30 multiplied by the height which is 6 the fifth one that is between uh, t and 50 so that is half into sum of parallel sides that is 6 plus 20 multiplied by 3.5 last but not the least that is the sixth one that is half into 10 into 20 and just add it up so when you add it up you get the answer next question it says a van 
of mass 3600 kg stowing a trailer of 1200 kg along a straight horizontal road using a light horizontal rope that's a van that's a trailer straight horizontal road resistive forces are 700 on the van 300 on the trailer driving force exerted by the van is 2500 find the tension in the rope just draw a simple diagram so now this thing is your van like this so let me draw it that's your van and this one is your trailer and there is a tow bar connecting these two so let's start labeling the forward force is 2500 tension is over here tension is over here this is van this is trailer resistive forces are 700 newton 2500 newton was the forward force and this is 300 newton and uh, it's moving and since they are not saying it's moving at constant speed so therefore there should be acceleration so this is a question of connected particle 2500 minus tension minus 700 is equals to mass 3600 into acceleration a similarly tension minus 300 that is equals to 1200 a when you add both the equation you get the equation of the system 2500 minus 700 minus 300 that is 4800a so this is 2500 minus 1000 which is 1500 divided by 4800 is equals to a hence you can write the value of a either in fractions or in decimals and if it's decimals if it's exact that's perfectly fine if it's inexact then round it off so this answer comes out to be 0.3125 and this in fractions come comes out to be 5 over 60 meter per second square meter per second square now it says the driving force is removed and the van driver applies a braking force which x only on the van the resistive forces remains unchanged find the least possible value of the braking force which will cause the rope to become slack so let me draw the diagram again and again this one is the car and this one is the trailer if i've changed the color that won't make a difference on our calculation and uh, there is a tow bar connecting the two now first of all your forward force is now zero your tension will also be zero let it remain here for a while and let's see how we proceed this is van this is trailer this is 700 newton as before this is 300 newton as before what else is there there is a breaking force let let's call this breaking force as b subscript f b f and now first of all uh that means it's gonna decelerate that's for sure but this time the tension is zero so your working is zero minus t minus 700 minus breaking force is equals to mass into acceleration that is 3600 a and similarly tension minus 300 is equals to mass into acceleration now you don't need the system velocity the reason you don't need the uh, acceleration or the braking force at this moment actually you're going to find it because tension is zero because slack so therefore tension is zero so this thing disappears this thing disappears so from the second equation minus 300 is 1200 a therefore a is negative 0.25 meter per second square this is equation one this is equation two so plug in equation one that is zero minus 700 minus breaking force is equals to 3600 into negative 0.25 that comes out to be negative 900 that is minus 700 minus breaking force so therefore minus breaking force is equals to minus 200 therefore breaking force comes out to be 200 newton that is the value for this particular answer question number three it says the diagram shows a semicircular track of radius a b a uh, track a b c of radius 1.8 so this is radius 1.8 
fixed in a vertical plane. Points A and C are at the same horizontal level. That's A and C. Point B is at the bottom of the track. The section AB is smooth. Section BC is rough. A small block is released from rest at A show that the speed of the block at B is 6. Now since this portion is smooth, which portion? The AB portion. So AB track is smooth. Therefore, this is principle of conservation of energy. Total energy at A should equal total energy at B. That's the logic for this one. When we talk about A, so potential energy at A is mgh. Is m given? No, m is not given. That is asked later. That is m into 10 into 1.8. That's the height. And kinetic energy at A is equals to 0. Potential energy at B is 0, kinetic energy at B is half into m into v square. So therefore the total energy m into 10 into 1.8, m into 10 into 1.8 equals to half into m into v square. So 1.8 into 10 that's 18, 18 into 2 is 36, 36 is equals to v square. Therefore v comes out to be 6 meter per second. The m and the m cancels off. That part is done. Now the section BC is rough. So rough section is BC. What does it say? The blocks comes to instantaneous rest for the first time at a height of 1.2 meter above the level of B. So that means somewhere here, let me label this distance, this value as D. That is where the kinetic energy of the particle would be zero because it's coming to rest. And the potential energy, since this is 1.2 meter above the ground, that is m into g into h, which is 1.2. This energy is the same as before. But since the work is rough, this is the start. This is the end. So therefore, I would say the total energy at the start minus total energy at the end is work done against resistance. Work done against resistance is 4.5. So that is over here. And total energy at the beginning, that is half into m into v square. So this is half into m into v square, that is 6 square. Minus total energy at the end, that is equals to m into 10 into 1.2. So let me move this forward a little bit. So therefore, this is m into 10 into 1.2. So simplify it, 36 divided by 2, that is 18m. And this is 12m is equals to 4.5. 6m is equals to 4.5. m comes out to be 0.75 kg. That's the answer for this particular part. Question number four. It says a cyclist starts from rest at point A and travels along a straight road AB coming to rest at B. So it starts from rest at A and then comes to rest at B. The displacement of the cyclist is given by such and such. Show that the distance AB is this much. For four mark, I find the maximum velocity of the cyclist. That will also be done. So first of all, what we do is that we differentiate velocity is d is by dt that is 0 0.004 this is 2 into 75 150 t minus 3 t square let me take something more common 0 0.004 and let me take t common and this is 150 minus 3 t and we would say dv by dt is equals to v is equals to 0 not dv by dt so V equals to zero because that's instantaneous rest. Comes to instantaneous rest. Therefore, 0 0.04 disappears. T is equals to zero. 150 is equals to 3T. Therefore, T comes out to be 50 seconds. That's the first thing. Second thing, show that the distance is this much. So the distance equation is already given. You don't have to integrate the velocity. Some people, they get emotional and they integrate it all over again. We know that when t is 0, s is 0. Now when t is 50, evaluate s, that's 0 0.004. And this is 50. And this is 150 minus 3 into 50. Is that the equation? So that's the velocity equation, my bad. So uh, the displacement equation was written above. 
that's 0 0.004 and take t square common out and this is 75 minus t so that's easier to work with 0 0.004 and t square is 50 square and 75 minus 50 and you would evaluate it and then you would get the answer for this particular part and of course the answer is given that is 250 meters find the maximum velocity for maximum of anything derivative of velocity should equal to zero this is the concept of turning point what is the derivative of velocity that is 150 t minus 3 t square v is 150 150 is inside 150 t minus 3 t square and what's on the outside that's 0 0.004 this is velocity what is acceleration that is dv by dt even if you don't don't use the term acceleration it doesn't make a difference 0 0.004 150 minus 60 and then what we do is that we find the value so therefore our uh, dv by dt equals to zero therefore 150 minus 60 equals to zero t comes out to be 25 seconds and they're asking for the maximum velocity so when t is 25 velocity is equals to 0 0.004 and take t common out and uh, 150 minus 3t so that is 0 0.004 t is 25 and 150 minus 3 times 25 which is 75 and then you get the answer as 7.5 meters per second so question number four is also done and dusted now let's move to question number five what does it say a railway engine of mass 75,000 kg so railway engine of mass 75,000 kg is moving up underline this up inclined at an angle alpha when sine alpha is this much the engine is traveling at a constant speed the engine is working at 960 kilowatt there is a constant force resisting the motion of the engine find this resistance force so a whole page is given for this particular part now first of all it's better that we draw a diagram so this is a diagram and there is a particle over here that is the railway engine and then the forward force that is let me draw it that is 960 into 1000 divided by velocity which is 30 the backward forces are there is a resistive force rf and there is the weight component which is 75000 into g into sine theta or alpha whatever that is that is 0.01 so 960 into 1000 divided by 30 because the acceleration is zero constant speed forward forces and backward forces are equal that is rf plus 75000 into 10 into 0 0.01 hence you can find the value of rf and this comes out to be 24500 newton that is the resistive force for three marks now it says the engine comes to a section of a track which is horizontal so now we have a horizontal track the same engine is up there like this and now the forward force uh, power of the engine is now reduced to 900 kilowatts okay so first of all there is 900 kilowatts power uh, it's still traveling at 30 meter per second power on the engine is reduced resistance to motion is no longer constant so since resistance force is no more constant so therefore cannot use f is equals to ma because f is equals to ma is only valid for only valid for constant acceleration and but in the next 60 seconds the work done against the resistive force the work done against the resistive force is this much find the speed of the engine at the end of 60 seconds now you don't need a diagram all you need is that equation that big equation the work energy equation so work energy equation that is work done by engine that is change in potential plus change in kinetic plus work done against resistance 
Now change in potential is zero because it's a horizontal surface. So horizontal surface, therefore change in potential is zero. Initial kinetic energy is 30. Final kinetic energy, let's call it V. So now the change in kinetic energy is half. This is 75,000. And this is V square minus 30 square. That is this part. Work done against resistance, that's already given. That's 46500 into 1000 joules. That's already given. This is already given. So what are they asking for? They are asking for the work done by the engine. So the work done by the engine, and now you have to involve power, is work divided by time. So uh, we don't have the work given. And we are looking for V. So now this thing over here, the work is power multiplied by time. So power is 900 into 1000 multiplied by time, which is 60 seconds. So get it all right over here. Listen to it again. This is power. This is time. That's the work done by the engine. Change in potential, zero. Change in kinetic is this much. Work done against resistance is this much. So in the end, you make V the subject after all the calculation and you'll find the velocity at the end of 60 seconds. So that was a nice question. Question number six. Question number six says, a block of mass 5 kg is held in equilibrium near a vertical wall by two light strings. Now, very first thing, right from the beginning. When they say two light strings, that means both are different strings. So two different tension, one is the blue, one is the purple. The blue one, let me label as T1. The purple one, let me label this thing as T2. So there are two different tension. They are inclined at 60 degrees. What is the next thing that I'll do? The next thing I'll do is that I'll draw a dotted line like this. And I label this angle as 30 degrees. Because if I go further, this is 90. So this is 30. This is 30. So I'm going to work with 30. Given that x is equals to 100, find the tension in the lower string. So they're only asking for T2. Of course, we'll be working for both of them. Uh, resolve horizontally. T1 cosine 30 plus T2 cosine 30 equals to x, but x is 100. So x is no longer x, x is 100. That's the first thing. Second thing, uh, the weight component is acting down. So don't forget that. People tend to forget that. There is no reaction force because there is no surface. Keep that in mind. We talked about this thing in one of the previous uh, paper in which the examiner report was discussed. T1 sine 30. So T1 sine 30 equals to T2 sine 30 plus 5G. This is equation 1. This is equation 2. You solve simultaneously. You get the value of T1. You get the value of T2. So the examiners only ask for T2. So that is the question for this one. Now it says find the least value for which the block remains in equilibrium in the position shown. Now if x is unknown, this is basically your x. That means the two equations would remain the same. So let me draw this thing, uh, just the brief version over here. So this is like this. And this purple one is like this. And this force is like this. And there is the weight which is like this. Got it all together? This is T1. This is T2. This is x. This is 5g. And this angle is 30 degrees, just like this. This is 30 degrees. This is 30 degrees. Now, let me make the equation and then we will think. So, it's the same equation as before. So, therefore, T1 cosine 30 plus T2 cosine 30 equals to x. This is equation number 1. Equation number 2 is T1 sine 30 equals to t2 sine 30 plus 5g this is equation number two when they are saying least value of x that is possible if one of the tension 
is zero. If one goes away, so that will be the least value because lesser things to balance. Which one has the liberty to go away? When you look at this equation, they both look equally equal. This one, if t2 is 0, then t1 sine 30 is equals to 5g. If t1 is 0, if t2 uh, is 0, t1 sine 30 is this thing. If t1 is equals to 0, then t2 sine 30 plus 5g equals to 0. And t2 sine 30, which is negative 5g. The first one is possible. The second one is impossible. It won't remain in balance. Because they both are pointing down. They both are pointing down. How can this be possible? So there will be no equilibrium in uh, the second scenario. This is the second scenario. This is the first scenario. So let me erase this. In the second scenario, therefore, we have to stick with the first scenario. What is the first scenario if two t, t2 is 0? So now if t2 is 0, let me grab a marker. And therefore, this thing equals to 0. Therefore, this thing equals to 0. So your no, new equations are this. The first one is t1 cosine 30 equals to x. That's the first equation t1 sine 30 equals to 5g so now you would solve these two equations and this is equation 1 this is equation 1 this is equation 2 you will find the value of x very simple the second equation is this is 1 this is 2 uh, t1 into 0 0.5 is equal to 5 into 10 so therefore t1 is 50 divided by 0.5 so 50 divided by 0.5 this is 500 over 5 which comes out to be 100 newton they are asking for x therefore x is t1 cosine 30 that is 100 multiplied with root 3 over 2 or 100 multiplied with 0 0.8660 so this comes out to be 50 root 3 or its equivalent that is 86.6 newton so this is rounded off to three significant figures this is exact whichever one you feel like giving it to the examiner so this is question number six that's done now we are coming to question number seven and uh, there's something strange about this question we will see it in a short while now the question says particles p and q have masses such and such respectively so q is downwards p is upwards q is 2m p is m the particles are initially held at rest 6.4 meter apart on the line of greater slope of a rough plane so this is a rough plane so let me label this incline at an angle alpha sine alpha is 0 0.8 so let me get something straight sine of alpha is 0 0.8 that is 4 over 5 therefore cosine alpha you can double check that comes out to be 3 over 5 very common value or 0 0.6 then it says particle p is released from wrist so this one is released from wrist and this one the purple one that is pushed up projected up with a speed of 10 meter per second the coefficient of friction is 0 0.6 show that the acceleration of q up the plane is negative 11.6 meter per second squared so that is the first part let me get started with the first part so this is only about q and what i can do is that i can apply the equation our forward force is zero it's pushed but there is no force acting upon it it's given a push of 10 meter per second and the force disappears zero minus m g sine theta minus f max is equals to mass into acceleration the mass is not m the mass is 2m so let me write it this is 2m this is 2m what else should i write f max f max is mu r that is mu and 2mg cosine alpha so it's not theta 
it's alpha so let me get this straight so therefore this is alpha over here now let me rewrite this equation 0 minus 2 mg sine alpha which is 0 0.8 minus f max mu is 0 0.6 and uh, this thing is 2 mg multiplied by 0 0.6 bracket closed is equals to 2 m multiplied by a now you will take this 2 m common out and this 2 m and this 2 m and this 2 m it's taken common out so therefore this comes out to be minus 10 into 0 0.8 minus 0 0.6 into 0 0.6 into this thing that is 3.6 is equals to a so 8 plus 3.6 is 11.6 a is negative 11.6 meter per second square it is decelerating now this is the first thing that we did now it says the time for which the particles are in motion before they collide now the scenario is what exactly comes in your mind when you look at this question when you look at this question uh, let me take you to another page because i need a little bit more space in working it out so the first thing you already have it now part b and part c five and four nine marks i'm com combining them find the time for which the particles are in motion before they collide once they collide the particle coalesce on impact find the speed of the combined particles immediately after impact the last four marks are not difficult it's the first part which is b that's kind of tricky so now uh, let's focus on this now what happens is that what is the imagination that you have you have this imagination because you have solved so many uh, kinematics question the usual thought process that is the two particles will move towards each other and they're gonna collide with each other and the total distance covered would be 6.4 so the thought process is sp plus sq is equals to 6.4 that is what i have in mind that is exactly what you have in mind now let's look at particle q the one that's going up u is 10 meter per second i'm gonna not gonna write in the units because instead of wasting so much time let's think very very precisely i'm going to use the acceleration negative 11.6 sq is equals to ut plus half into minus 11.6 into t square and this simplifies to 10t minus 5.8 t square that is sq that you get let me highlight this so whatever i'll be getting i'll be highlighting it for particle the other one that is particle p now what's happening that u is zero and where is the acceleration now that's a good question let me go to this diagram the pulling force is mg sine theta or sine alpha minus mu mg cosine alpha is equals to mass into acceleration g sine alpha minus mu g cosine alpha equals to a g is 10 sine alpha is 0 0.8 mu is 0 0.6 g is 10 cosine alpha is 0 0.6 equals to a so therefore this is 8 minus 3.6 a comes out to be 4.4 meter per second square irrespective of the mass because mass eventually cancels off so this acceleration on a rough plane down will always be like this this is f max opposing it this is mg sine theta pulling it and this is acceleration so even if it's 2m the acceleration will still be the same remember my words when i'll be doing it a little bit later so now coming back to this the acceleration is 4.4 i've already written there so sp equals to ut which is 0 into t plus half into 4.4 into t square so therefore this comes out to be 2.2 t square that is equals to sp that is the second piece of info that i have and what happens is that let me use this thing and let me add it up 
So SP plus SQ equals to 6.4, 10T minus 5.8T square plus 2.2T square is equals to 6.4. When you simplify it, you get something like 9T square minus 25T after a lot of steps. I'm skipping those steps. 9T square minus 25T plus 16 equals to 0. Getting rid of the decimals and everything and taking care of the plus minus sign. You get two values of T. One value is 1. One value is 16 over 9. Uh, let's accept this value because this is the first time that they will uh, collide and let's just reject this value. So basically, what is the time? So part B is done. That is the first thing. Find the speed of the combined particle immediately after the impact. Now what's happening? Now what's happening is that when T is equals to 1 for part C, uh, velocity of Q, that is... Uh, u plus a t minus 11.6 into t so t is 1 therefore this comes out to be negative 1.6 meter per second what does this negative means that it has turned around because initially it was going up now it's giving you a negative sign so it's turned around and now it's moving in 1.6 meter per second downstairs what is the velocity of p Velocity of P is U plus A T. So therefore 0 plus whatever is the acceleration that is 4.4 multiplied by 1 which is 4.4 meter per second. Now it's a simple scenario of collision. It says a mass of Q into velocity of Q. Mass of P, velocity of P. Both the masses are added together. And we are finding a new velocity. Let's call it V uh, or let's call it W. So therefore M into 4.4. So this is uh, 2M. First of all 2M into 1.6. And this is M into 4.4. This comes out to be 2M plus M into W. Again the M disappears. So this is 3.2, this is 4.4 divided by 3. So therefore this is W and you will find the value of W. So this is the working for this part. But listen up, what's the new thing? The new thing is it does not happen this way. Because the question was not giving you any hint. So a lot of people thought of this process. And let me show you what the examiner is telling us. The examiner is telling us, uh, I'll show you the mark scheme in a short while. Uh, let me select it from here. That is over here. The first part is 11.6. That was not any issue. That's still here. And ignore this part. Ignore this part. And now let's see what does it say. Special case for those who do not take into account the fact that Q comes to rest and then changes its direction. A lot of people did this. And it also says in the examiner report, the examiner report says uh, in part two, in this part, almost all candidates did not realize that particle Q comes to rest and then moves down the plane before the two particle meet because it never happened so. So that is just was natural that they both are moving towards each other. Total distance should be 6.4 meter, but that's not what's happening. But what the examiner has done that they have given us working for this one and this is what we just got and they are giving us maximum four marks out of five although the candidate wouldn't be thinking in question number seven the very last question of the paper so analytically because this is supposed to be a normal question or maybe some hint was was to be given so that the examiner could proceed but this is not actually what happened so now let me take you to the scenario to tell you exactly what happened. Now exactly what happened was that, that in reality, what is happening is that, first of all, let's focus on Q. When we focus on Q, acceleration is minus 11.6, U is equals to 10, final velocity is zero. So therefore, let me first find V is equals to U plus 80, 
and 0 is equals to 10 plus negative 11.6 multiplied by t so t comes out to be 0.862 seconds that's the first thing that's happened it's coming to rest in this time but that's nothing unusual the unusual thing is what is the distance covered while this is happening so v square is u square plus 2 a s and I have V and I have U and I have S. So let me take the calculate the value of S that comes out to be 4.310 meter. That is the next thing that you achieve. Now let me calculate the similar data for P. So now we are talking about P. Initial velocity is zero. Acceleration is plus 4.4 t is equals to 0.862 seconds what is happening to this particle during the same time interval so this is 0.862 this is 0.862 first thing let me calculate the velocity v is equals to u plus 80 v comes out to be 3.7928 3.7928 meter per second that is the first thing that we need to calculate second thing what is the distance covered during this time so v square is u square plus 2 a s again uh, 3.7928 whole square that is 0 square plus 2 into 4.4 into s this s comes out to be 1.634 meter that the second thing that needs to be underlined are these two things adding up to 6.4 meter that is given initially the answer is no it's not adding up let me show you what's happening let me remove this let me remove this let me remove this extra stuff also the particle that is at the bottom q it traveled upwards something like this let's make it thinner it traveled upwards a distance of how much 4.310 meters 4.31 let's call it so somewhere here this is 4.3 three one meters that is the distance traveled by q the distance traveled by particle p is 1.634 so now the distance traveled by p let me mark it in green is let me make it straight this thing is sp is 1.634 meter now it's an exaggerated diagram between this and this there is a gap how much is that gap let me add it up little bit of calculation so 6.4 minus the sum of 1.634 plus 4.310 this comes out to be 0.455 meter that is the gap that will always remain why because now the scenario is this particle has reached a velocity of zero and it will go down it will have some velocity it will go down what is the velocity at this instant that is 3.7928 so this will be traveling down with 3.7928 let me just remove this so uh let me get it okay so now this gap will always be there so let me mark this gap in blue so this thing is always there this difference is this difference point three point four point five 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 now what is happening is that the acceleration of both particles is the same that was already shown over here i think it's on the next slide the acceleration of both particles that is this one and this one is the same that is 4.4 meter per second square so this is constant let me take this to the other side it won't there would be a problem so a is 4.4 now let's do the calculation so therefore a is 4.4 meter per second square this is for particle p this is for particle u when the gap is 0.455 meter irrespective of the masses now what is happening uh, for particle q u is 0 acceleration is 4.4 and time is capital T so therefore sq is equals to ut plus half into 4.4 into t square for particle p 
initial velocity is 3.7928, acceleration is 4.4, time is t, and sp equals to ut 3.7928 multiplied by t plus half into 4.4 into t square. Now this time the gap would remain the same. The currently the gap is this much, and of course it would reduce. So therefore, sp minus sq, sp is faster. So sp minus sq is 0.455. When you solve this equation, you get 3.7928t plus 2.2t square minus 2.2. 2t square that is equals to 0.455 you solve and you get the value of t to be 0.1199 or 0.120 seconds that is the answer for this part so now this is what actually is happening so what is the total time taken so now the total time the first time was how much that is uh, 0.862 seconds so that is 0 0.862 plus 0 0.120. This adds up to 0.982 seconds. Now tell me who in the normal state of mind would think about it during uh, solving this paper. And that also question number seven. So this part was very, very tough or a little bit unclear. So that's why the examiner uh, had a big uh, change of mind and had a big heart and gave marks also to those who thought otherwise and now what is the speed at this instant so now for particle p first particle q u is 0 uh, a is 4.4 time is 0.12 seconds so therefore velocity of q v is equals to u plus 80 that comes out to be 0.528 after the calculation meter per second for particle p u is 3.7928 acceleration is 4.4 time is 0.12 after the calculation velocity of p that came out to be 4.3208 4.3208 now remember p had a mass of m kilogram q had a mass of a uh, 2m kilogram so now apply the same equation uh, mass of q velocity of q mass of p velocity of p that's mass of p plus velocity of p mass of p mass of q multiplied by w where w is the coalesce velocity so that's this is 2m into 0.528 and this is m into a uh, 4.3208 that comes out to be 3m multiplied by w and then you get the answer 1.792 meter per second so that completes november 2021 variant 42 m1 paper which is paper 4 and good luck with your exams